Hey there YouTube um, and sound community. I thought I'd do a quick video about the um, Electrosonics SR dual receivers and the user-defined um, frequencies on them. Um, they're really handy and sometimes a bit underused and I've found that um, you can use them for a sort of a means which I'm not sure they were necessarily even designed for. Um, so the first thing is that the um, Electrosonics SR dual receivers have on the tuning mode, which we can just hop over to here, um, when you go into the setup menu, you can scroll down um, to tuning and you've got these different modes here. You've got um, norm, um, which basically just means it um, has every frequency available. You've got fine, which is the same thing again, but it goes in 25 kilohertz steps. And then you've got A, B, C, and D, which are groups of predefined frequencies. Um, watch, what, what they do is they don't intermodulate with each other. That's the thinking. I'm not completely convinced that Electrosonics A, B, C, D are predefined for the um, six, block 606. They do work on block 26 and stuff. I think they have had some problems in the past. I believe also I will have heard that that was resolved with the SRB update. Um, but nonetheless, they're there anyway. Um, not that I've extensively used them. You've then got two um, user-definable frequency banks, U and V. And what these really are um, is a a storage bank for any frequency you want. So they do, they're not sort of into mod free. Um, you choose what they are and when you're in that mode, when you hop through, um, it will just jump to the next frequency you've programmed. Um, and that's really useful because if you've got a whole bunch of frequencies you know that you're gonna be using, you can then program all these in and rather than scanning through the entire list of every frequency available from 00 to FF you can just hop straight from the one you're on down to the next one so you know changing the receiver on input 1 from transmitter 1 say to transmitter 5 is just a simple case of just hopping through until you're on the receiving bank of number 5 um, dead easy. Um, I found, and this is where I think the use for it maybe uh, is is underused, um, is that if you're using just a, a simple six channel system like we are um, here at the moment, and I'm using Freak Finder, which is here we go, is a screenshot of it. Um, I've got my you know six frequencies there, um, and I've got those typed in. They're intermod free. The spacing's all good and all that stuff. It's all programmed in. Um, so if I have just these uh, frequencies programmed into every one of the receivers, so two zero three six five a seven two etc. If each if all of those frequencies are programmed into every one of these, what it means is that. Transmitter one can remain programmed to two zero, and you can then put any one of these receivers to receive 20 and essentially reprogram the bag as a consequence. So if they all have all six transmitters programmed and there are six cha input channels here, it's a way of rerouting really. It's quite handy. Um, if you're using a large system and you're having a problem with a certain frequency, if you have programmed in say four uh, spare frequencies that you know are into mod free you can just have your one to six programmed in and then you know you you already know and already programmed are four extras so if you're having difficulty with one you can just jump up to um, one of the spare ones you know is into mod free and good um, this can be really helpful also helpful when you're licensing frequencies and you're using other blocks um, you know using these groups can be a real time saver um, so next thing I thought I'd do is just actually show you how to program them. It's a little fiddly, um, so I'll just come in a bit closer on this uh, so you can have a better look at it. So here we are. We have currently got um, just two frequencies programmed in because I just started doing this and thought, hey, why not record it? Um, we've got F0 and BF. Now the next one I want to program in is beneath it. Um, actually, this is a good point. It's quite worth doing this in order of hexadecimal value, i.e., Program in F0 first and then go down to BF and then go down to 7.2. 7.2 is the next one I want to program. Um, this way you don't end up zooming all the way around the block because um, you can't press and hold. You've got to do it manually. So here's how we program it. When we're looking at a frequency like this one here, we're on BF. We hold down the menu and select button. Whilst holding that down, we then click down or up to find our new frequency. So the next one... I want to program is 7-2. So holding down menu, click down, and here we go. Um, you just have to keep clicking, basically. That's the deal. Um, you can't press and hold, which is a bit of a, 
uh, an annoyance, but there we go. Um, so we just keep clicking, and if you're doing a lot of these, you end up with tired thumbs quite quickly. Um, I had to do 20 receivers the other day, and we had to program in about 30 different frequencies. So at the end of that, I felt like I'd been playing the guitar for quite a few hours. So here we go, coming down 7 2. And there we go, 7 2. So now what we do. You'll see the V here is flashing. I'm using the V bank. You could also use the U bank. They're just two random letters to be user definable. When we're on this, we've, pre we've held down menu select and we've clicked down to get to it. In order to save it, we now hold down menu select and the down or up key and it will then save that. It will then go to a solid, um, solid V. So hold it down and press the other, hold it down and boom, there you go. So now 7.2 is programmed. Now, if I press up, goes up to BF, which is the other one I programmed, and up again, F0. So now it's just jumping through those frequencies that I've programmed, which is dead handy. Now, um, for the benefit of the video, I'm going to show you how to get rid of a frequency as well. If you program one and you don't want it in there anymore, or you want to just move it or you incorrectly saved it, you hold down menu select and down or up again until it starts flashing. So there we go. And it's flashing now. Now, while it's flashing, if we don't want to save that one anymore and we want to remove it from the memory, whilst it's on this state, you just press the up or down key and it gets rid of it. So press down and boom, it's gone. It just jumps back to BF, which is the next nearest one. So there we go. And, you know, if you program all of them in to all of the receivers, all three of them, as I say, you then can just jump through these. It can be very helpful. And if you're using a, you know, a relatively simple setup in a block that you know is good, you can perform a scan at the beginning of the day and if there's no major issues, you can just have a look and just use the frequencies that you've predefined. So yeah, pretty handy. Hope it's helpful. And um, yeah, any comments or questions, just please drop them in the box below. Thanks very much.